I am going to kind of blast through this Pecha Kucha style, uh, 20 seconds a slide, maybe something like that, and try to give you the spirit of it. But um, Rizzi has always had a heritage of making things, and um, it was originally called the Rhode Island School of Crafts and Design. And it's kept that legacy, and you'll see in the ID department, if you if you're in the ID department at RISD, um, there are really significant shops where kids are making stuff. This is a grad student who thought that um, the typical grocery jug or water jug was ugly, so he designed some tooling out on the sidewalk that you could heat it up and form it into a different shape and make it more attractive. So really hands-on culture. These are some of my sophomores who are part of the project with Sustainable Minds. It's diverse student uh, body, um, quite a few students from Korea, probably like 60% from Korea. Um, and I'm not going to talk about this a lot, but this is a case study. I worked at Gillette for 10 years. We spent $500 million on incremental innovation and fusion from Mach 3. And the amount of resources that went into it were totally insane. And it returned $1 billion in 18 months. So from a marketing and sales perspective, it was an enormous success. And if only sustainability was in that original brief, the crazy R&D culture that achieved all these other goals would have easily achieved some level of sustainability. So just getting that in the brief early is huge. This is from the story of stuff in a bunch of other places, but we need five planet Earths if the rest of the world is going to come up to the American developed standard of living. And also from um, the story of stuff, at our standard of living, national happiness has been in decline for 50 years. So what standard of living do we really have? Students love this because I tell them it's all about you, right? They're like, he gets it. We're really cool. It's all about us. Anyway, but um, <laughs> a professor who understands me, right? Well, it's about us, right? We're in these bodies. We're li living these lives. We touch the people we touch. And we have these things around us, our houses, our guitars. And these things, all our stuff, are portals to experience, right? That's really what they are. They represent ways to interact with other people. Um, so it, the stuff is really ways to interact with us, yourself, your friends, your environment, your community. So our stuff, it's all about us, it's all about our stuff, and it's all about us, our stuff, and the ecosystem, the planet, right? And how we relate to this planet as creatures among many other creatures, right? And you know the bumblebee story, they're disappearing, we don't know why, right? Um, so a big part of this is, is I tell everyone, and for myself too, is we're part of the machine. Right? We're all part of the machine right now, and how are we going to change the machine? And of course, I use a combustion engine as the example. Great example of innovation, amazing innovation with incremental innovation for 100 years that's now global warming and graying the planet. So how are we going to get more of a shift? I'm going to skip this slide. Um, you guys have seen this, but this is what the students see. We take the Ocala graphic and we try to really pare it down. We do this at the three dots in the middle, and then we talk about product life cycle. We made a big poster to Philip's point. We said, this is your menu of strategies. And we made these really busy lines connecting them all to emphasize, <laughs> like, it's not circular. You don't have to go one, two, three, four. So look at your problem and then see which strategies you want to connect. Um, and this was a two and a half week project. So these aren't like refined, elegant, beautiful design solutions. But the students realized how crazy the gray space is and how hard it is to really think about products in all phases of development. So two and a half weeks, sophomores. This person went for really minimizing the size of the toaster. Um, this person kind of went for a, a modular aspect. So if you're a single person, you just slide these two plates in and you make one piece of toast. If you're a family, you start to slide more uh, plates in. Of course, at RISD, you need the conceptual approach. So the <laughs> The cardboard toaster, so the box the toaster comes in, <laughs> becomes the outside of the toaster. You know? But all the flame retardants you'd have to put in there to make it work, I don't know if it's sustainable. <laughs> um, this one is just interesting, traditional looking. Um, they were thinking about thermodynamics, so they realized that a lot of what you lose in the toasting process is this inefficiency of heat just escaping. So they were thinking about structures that could hold heat more. Um, this one, I don't really know what it's about, but it had the Ocala <laughs> analysis they did on the bottom, so I wanted to throw that in there. Because they were, <laughs> they were required to actually do the benchmark, the benchmark exercise that a lot of you have done, and then to, on their final concept, do an analysis to the best of their ability and compare it to the benchmark, which was eye-opening for a lot of them. And a lot of them got passionate about materials from doing this. This one. Yeah, 
<laughs> 500 slices of toast. Yellow brick road of toast. I'm, I'm, again, I'm not sure. I think this one was mostly about like minimizing one slice of toast. Kind of looks like a tape measure. Just a well-executed rendering. And they did have to, oh, I know why I put that. They did have to think about breaking out the components of their proposition and then getting that into the system. So I just thought this showed that. Um, this one went for the high value materials, so probably be like a $400 toaster, bent glass, laminated plywood, but could you use it for 100 years? Who knows? Um, again, these are not heavily developed. This was a breakout of one of the other con concepts you saw. So you can see a deeper level of, of thinking on how it would actually go together and what the materials were. Um, whoops. So um, again, one huge thing that came out of this was this like lust from the students for materials. They were like, they started researching like mad. And they were kind of frustrated, like even though there's so much amazing work you guys have put into Ocala, there's so many emerging materials that are like so hungry. They're like, we, we, you know, I researched for 10 hours and I couldn't find the properties. I said, okay, okay. <laughs> but, um, but it's good because um, another huge result out of this, and I'm almost done here, is that, um, and you guys, tangent here, Ecolect, RISD grad Matt Grisby, who Philip told me is now chairing, co chairing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Co chairing with Philip the sustainable design part of Student IDSA? Or? No, well, uh, he's now the chair of the eco design section of IDSA. Okay. He was a former. Okay. Yeah. So um, Philip has a relationship with him and he started Ecolect, which now is the largest online database of sustainable materials, is what I've heard. Um, and it's free for the basic service. Um, and I had the opportunity this last weekend to speak in DC at the Swedish consulate with a Swedish designer who was part of the Interactive Institute from Stockholm and they had a beautiful um, show there showing products that show power consumption in some way. So cords that light up as you use more power and this, this beautiful lamp that sits above your dining table and if you use more power it starts to close down and if you use less it starts to bloom open. So I just thought it was an another way to show like, how you can bring more meaning into product design beyond material use and, and other stuff like that. So that's all I'm going to show you for today.